All right, we're gonna have to make this video very quick because we only have five minutes. What's up guys, Forest Knight here. Welcome to this week's Friday Under Five, where basically I choose a topic within the software development or design industry, considering that's what my YouTube channel is about, and consolidate all the information based on that topic within a five minute video for you guys, so I avoid jibber jabbering about a bunch of stuff you may not care about. In today's video, we're gonna be discussing the 10 iOS UI design do's and don'ts. And I am not a professional designer by any means, However, I did gather this information from the Apple iOS developer handbook, so don't believe me, believe these guys. I am just the messenger. Also, it correlates well with Wednesday's video where I designed a home screen for the new iPhone 10. I will plug that right here in case you're interested in watching that, but first, finish this video. It's less than five minutes long. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So number one, formatting content. The absolute worst thing you could do, in my opinion, is have a scaled down website or application where you can scroll horizontally. I don't mean scroll from one screen to another. I mean in order to see all the content from that paragraph or from that image, you have to scroll left or right. You want to make sure everything is consolidated within one screen, whether that be on iPhone or iPad, so people only need to scroll horizontally. Number two, touch controls. I'm sure many of you have gone on kayak.com on your computer and you've seen something similar to this. Sure, that's fine with a mouse where you can click, but it's not made for touch screens. You want something that looks more similar to this. And yes, you may send this in many other iOS applications, that's because this is what Apple recommends for their applications because it is very touchscreen UI friendly. Number three, hit targets. And hit targets include things like buttons or images that are clickable. You want these to be at least 44 points by 44 points because if they're any smaller, if someone tries to click on yes, they may accidentally click on no. And you want to make sure that if someone tries to click on one button, that is the button they press. Number four, text size. You want your text size to be at least 11 points because you don't want people having to zoom in on your application habitually to read the information on it. You want people to be able to read it clearly. Number five, contrast. You want to make sure your background and your font contrast each other. In other words, you want black font if you have a white background or you want white font if you have a black background. And I'm sure you can have light colored font with dark backgrounds like blue or green or whatever your theme of your app is, but you want to make sure if that font is dark, that your background is a light color and that these don't clash with each other. Number six, spacing. And more specifically, we're talking about line height and letter spacing, so your letters and words don't look like they're overlapping each other. You have plenty of room to scroll vertically, so use that room with one bigger font from an earlier step and two, line spacing. Make sure you adjust by increasing line spacing and letter spacing. And by line spacing, I do mean line height. Number seven, high resolution. You want a 1x, 2x, and 3x version of your image assets within your application because you want your iPhone SE screen to be able to scale all the way up to an iPad and keep a consistent image, a nice sharp image, because you don't want it to be all blurry when it grows. Also, you don't want to include just a 3x image because when 3x images are scaled down, they don't look as nice as a 1x image. Number eight, distortion. You wanna make sure you have the proper aspect ratio set for each of those image assets we were talking about. Otherwise, if you have certain constraints on a certain device, like if you turn it sideways, the image will distort and look something like this. And if you ask me, I'd rather have an image look like this, like it's a natural image as opposed to a squished image. Number nine, organization. If you go into any stock iOS application, take for example a settings app, it'll look somewhat similar and laid out to this application. That is because this is a nice clean application where when you click on something, you know exactly what you're gonna modify. If you have something more like this, and I'm sure if you've gone to any crappy website that isn't optimized to scale down into a mobile site, you've seen something like this, and it is just a mess to deal with. Number 10, alignment. You wanna make sure your image, your text, and your buttons, or whatever else you have in your app UI, are aligned properly so they make sense with each other. For example, you have something like this, where you have the image in the upper left, you have the text wrapped around that image, and then once you know all the information with that image and text are done, you have the continue button to continue to the next bulk of information. If you want a pad alignment, look at this. You have texts up top, images and buttons within that text, and those two paragraphs are supposed to be together. I know they're in Spanish, so many of you won't understand it, but they are supposed to be together, correlating with that image and with that button. It just doesn't make sense. You wanna make sure everything is aligned properly. 
And wow, that was 10 iOS UI design do's and don'ts already. I didn't think we were going to get through it that fast, but we did. I really hope I stayed within that five minutes, or else my second Friday Under 5 is going to be longer than five. Anyways, since you guys are still watching this video, I assume you like the content. If that's the case, be sure to drop a like on the video, and be sure to subscribe, because I put out videos like this every single week, try to do it multiple times a week. They have to do with software development and design. I kind of focus on iOS, I've been dabbling with web development, I've de been, da <laughs> been dabbling with artificial intelligence, so if you're interested in any of that type of stuff, be sure to subscribe. I hope to see you down the road, and I hope to see you next week. I'm out. Till next time, have a good one.